What's up guys? Back with another educational video and this week we are talking about nutrient timing. Nutrient timing was something that got a lot of attention. Back in like the early 2000s there was actually a book called Nutrient Timing written by Dr. John Ivey. A lot of this was about how you know, it was really important to time your carbohydrate and protein intake around your workouts. And the idea was when you train, you become more insulin sensitive, you can better tolerate carbohydrate. Uh, also when you train, it's catabolic. You need more protein around those times or specifically the timing of the protein that you need protein, you know, pre-workout and post-workout. This is now 15 years later. What does the research really say? Well, sadly the research has been kind of underwhelming because I was actually really big on nutrient timing uh, 10, 15 years ago. There really isn't that much data to suggest that nutrient timing is helpful. What might matter is protein distribution. If we look at protein intakes, there's been a few studies where they've fed people protein like right after a workout or several hours after a workout. And they didn't really see differences in uh, muscle mass gains over a period of time. It is possible since muscle accrual is a very slow process that the study just wasn't long enough or these studies just weren't long enough, but we really haven't seen anything to, to show that. Now, what we have seen is there are some studies showing that um, you can't make up for low protein at one time of the day with high protein at another time of the day because you have a minimum threshold to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, but also a cap. So for example, for various protein sources, again, it's, it's, it's very complicated, but around you know 30 to 50 grams at a meal is probably the maximum cap, depending on your lean body mass and the, and the source of protein you choose. If you ate no protein for 10 hours of the day and then wanted to have 100 grams at a couple meals to try to get to your, your protein recommendations, that's likely not gonna be optimal because there's quite a bit of that protein that's not gonna be able to further stimulate muscle protein synthesis. There's been a few studies, including the study I did as a graduate student uh, for my PhD, where we looked at, okay, if we feed low protein at most of the day, then really high protein at night versus uh, protein evenly distributed throughout the day, do we see differences in muscle mass? And we actually did see that in our research. And there was a recent study uh, out of a Japanese group where they saw differences in lean body mass accrual in people who ate a very low protein breakfast versus people who kind of ate a very high protein breakfast and also with protein equated between the groups throughout the day. It looks like protein distribution does matter for muscle. Now, what do I recommend? Well, I recommend three to five high quality protein containing meals per day. And if you're having three to five high quality protein containing meals per day, the likelihood is that you're going to have one of those meals within a few hours of your training session, and then another one of those meals within a few hours after your training session. Those amino acids that you have, even if you had it three hours before you trained, they're still gonna be available in your bloodstream while you're training. Same token, after you train, it's not like just catabolism takes over. In fact, resistance training is anabolic. It's not catabolic like endurance exercise is. Is it probably a good idea to get a protein feeding in within a relatively soon amount of time after your workout? Sure, but mostly as it pertains to just getting in enough pro total protein throughout the day distributed throughout the day. Now, what about dietary carbohydrate? Because that was a big aspect of nutrient timing as well. The idea being, well, when you have carbs post-workout, they're less likely to be stored as fat versus if you have them another time of the day. On a short-term basis, that might be true. However, over a 24-hour period, it doesn't look like it makes a difference. Let's just take an extreme example. Let's say I eat 300 grams of carbohydrate a day. And in one scenario, I'm gonna have 300 grams of carbohydrate all in the morning and I'm gonna train in the evening. And then let's say I'm gonna have all my 300 grams of carbohydrate after I train versus other times of the day. Even if that carbohydrate is less likely to be stored as fat during that time, if you are not eating any carbohydrate after your workout, what is your body gonna rely on? It's gonna rely on fatty acids for fuel. And there is research to show that even with zero carbohydrate intake post-workout, you do replenish glycogen because your body will use fats to spare glucose in your bloodstream to resynthesize glycogen. And if you're getting enough total glucose per day, 
So even eating 300 grams of carbohydrate in the morning, you're topping off those glycogen stores in the morning. So you're not actually that reduced. Whereas if you didn't have any carbohydrate early in the day, now your glycogen is lower when you train. And yes, you replenish it post workout, but the net difference is going to be zero. At the end of the day, does this stuff matter? If it does, it's very small. I prefer to eat more carbohydrate pre and post workout just because that's my bias. I grew up reading muscle magazines uh, that told me I needed to do that. And so I feel better when I do that. Does that mean that there's an actual physiological outcome from that? There's no evidence to support that. This is something some of you guys need to learn as well. It's okay to say, I have no evidence to support this. I just like doing it. I have no evidence to support the idea that it's physiologically superior to have more carbohydrate pre and post workout. I just prefer it. Maybe you don't. I know a lot of people who don't like to eat carbohydrates before their workout. They claim it makes them feel sleepy and tired. There's no evidence to support that, but hey, if they don't like it, no reason to do it. Guys, at the end of the day, it's about hitting your protein, carbohydrate, and fat targets throughout the day, being consistent with your training. If you do those things, you're gonna get pretty good results over a period of time. I hope you guys like this video. If you like it, click like, subscribe, check out the links in the description, and I'll catch you guys next week.